Hi, I'm Gary Lee, Sales Manager. And I'm Jeff Smith, Business Development Manager at Bounce Back Horsefence. In this presentation, we're going to show you a step-by-step -step guide how to install your Bounce Back Horse Fence system. We're confident if you follow these steps, regardless of your skill set, you'll have a low maintenance, hassle-free installation of your product. The video is broken into the following sections. Introduction to the installation video, the bounce back horse fence parts, the tools required. We're going to talk about the posts. We're talk going to talk about rolling out the product the day before to make your installation easier. We're going to talk about the interim brackets. We're also going to show you how to drill the holes in the straining posts and we're going to show you how to prepare the rail to attach to what we call the dead end post. We're going to attach the rail to the dead end post and we're going to show you how to insert the interim brackets. We're going to prepare the rail for straining and we're going to str then strain the rail. The information provided is a suggestion only. This information is general only and it is up to the individual to ensure they use the correct fencing method suitable to their situation. Acacia products will not assume responsibility for design choice by the installer. If unsure, it is recommended that the owner of the property seek further advice through an approved fencing contractor. We're going to talk about our parts for the bounce back horse fence. We've got our rail here in white, brown and black. As you can see on this black example, we've got two 2.5 high tensile wires. This is very important that they're high tensile because we can impart greater strains on the fence. Here we've got our low profile uh, vice grip. As you can see, it's got a one way jaw inside, so once the wire's in, it won't come out. Our joiner, again, one way jaws for joining uh, long runs, parts of fence that the owners may cut. Our polycarb bracket, low, again, low profile, nice and smooth, won't rust, fade or warp. Our top fix polycarb bracket, and we have our white and black for our flexor fence system still available. Our screws, tight 17 screw, 5 16th head with a neoprene washer. Neoprene washer is very important for not imparting too much pressure on the polycarb when we're using our impact driver. Okay, that's our parts list for bounce back horse fence system. Thanks for watching. We're going to talk about our tools required for installing our bounce back horse fence. We've got our measuring tools here, our tape measure. It's fairly self-explanatory. We've got our marking pens. You can see we've got a white marking pen for black fence, make it easier and a standard black marking pen, our square. Bolt cutters, we'll need those bolt cutters to just snip that wire when we're cutting our fence. We've got our other cutting tools here, our snips, our pliers, and our wire strippers. Now the wire strippers are used there to, to score the plastic when we're pulling the sheath away from the wire. We have it here, we've got a, today we've got an electric drill and a drill bit, at least 200 mil long, uh, 12 mil in diameter. Nice sharp wood bit, makes the, the job easier. Impact driver with our 5 16th bit for our tech screws to put our brackets on. And here we have our gripper tool. Now our gripper tool is available at Bounce Back Horse Fence, www.fencingforhorses.com.au. If you don't have a gripper tool and you've got, you, you need one, please go and see your local uh, rural store or hardware store. Tell them that you're using 2.5 wire um, and maybe take a, a vice grip in with you or something like that. It'll be a, of assistance to them. Okay, thanks for watching. Now we're going to talk to you about the posts used with the Bounce Back Horse Fence system. Our customers acquire their posts from their local supplier and over time have used a number of different materials, mainly timber, occasionally metal and occasionally plastic. Most of our customers use timber posts because they're sturdy and strong 
They're easily screwed and drillable. They're readily available and economical. And they can also be driven in, which provides extra strength in the ground. Now about our interim posts. A customer today has chosen a 120 mil treated pine timber post. We wouldn't recommend anything less than 100 mil because of the potential of breaking the post. These are spaced about three metres apart, which is typical. Our system can handle anywhere between two and five metres. That gives the customer flexibility to match other fencing in the area and to customise it for their purpose. All right, that's enough about the interim post. Let's talk about the straining post. Today our customer's chosen a 200 mil round hardwood timber post, which is particularly sturdy. It's been concreted in for extra strength and they've braced it with a steel brace like this into the ground so it can go nowhere and handle the strain of the product. If you're using timber bracing, normally we use, because it's wider and broader, we come off the side to make sure that we've got free space for the rail down the centre line. For any more questions about bracing and, and straining posts, have a look at our installation page on our website, which will give you a lot of examples on different bracing techniques to be employed. That's all about posts. Thank you for watching. Hi, right, we're going to give you an installation tip. We recommend the day before you do your installation that you roll out the panel. This is going to make it easy to handle because it's got wire in there, it's all coiled up. Uh, you want it in the sun. This is especially important in colder climates or colder times of year. Now, we've got a weight here on top of the product and simply we're going to roll the panel out like so. Very easy. Now I'm going to step you through how to install your interim brackets. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where I want the top of each rail to be. Grab my tape measure, line it up with my interim post, and measure down the required distance for my first rail. And I'm marking out where I want the top of the rail to be. Come down again the required distance to the, to the second rail. Today we're doing a three rail, in, rail installation, so obviously I'm marking out three three brackets and I'm going to come down and I'm going to mark the th third bracket as well. Now I then repeat that for all my interim posts. Once I've marked up all my posts, I'm going to grab my drill with my Type 17 screw, line up the mark and screw in the bottom hole only at this stage so I can insert the rail from the top. Be careful not to over tighten the brackets. The neoprene washer will help. So that's one. The second one, lying up again with my mark where I want that top of the rail to be. And in I go. And for number three. And there it is, I've installed my interim brackets. Do that for the rest of the run and we're right to go. Thank you. Now we're going to show you how to drill holes in your end post ready for our straining devices. First of all, we're going to start out by marking out our holes. So simply take a tape from the inside of the post and measure down the acquired distance and make a mark. Measure down 120 mils from there and make another mark. Excellent. Now the reason we, we measure from the inside of the post is, it, is this measure, measurement is critical. If you can imagine, when we take this, these wires and strain them. If these holes are more or less than 120 mils apart, you'll have stress on the, on the polymer rail and you could do it, cause damage to the product. Okay, now with our holes marked out, I'm going to take my impact drill, my 12 mil bit, brace myself in a sturdy position and get as level as possible.
And then again for our second hole. Repeat for your lower rails and for your other straining posts and you're ready to attach our straining devices. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to prepare the rail to attach to the post. First, with our tape measure, remembering we've got a 200mm post and we want 150mm extra. So we take our tape measure, our marking pen, and we're going to measure 350mm. Grab our square. Mark off. Now, with our snips, we're going to cut along the edge of the plastic. To the to the to our mark, our white mark. <clears throat> On the other side. Remove the flap, I'm going to cut along that white line. And our flap is now removed. Okay, we're going to grab our wire cutters. We're going to score around that plastic. Not too deep, we don't want to damage the gal. Okay, so you'll see there where I've scored. Do a little bit more there. And you'll see we've just cut that away. And the other side. And you'll just see a little bit of gal exposed. I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to twist. So I want to break that polymer on the wire. Right. I'm going to pull for easy removal. Okay, the other side. Right. We're going to take our Stanley knife and what we want to do is just about 10 mil. Be careful not to get the fingers in the way. And just score a little line across there. Cut that away. And we'll show you why we're doing this when we put the wire into the dead end post. Now we're ready to attach the wire to the post. In this demonstration, we're going to attach the rail to the post. You can see where we've done the cutout, so you'll see what we're doing now. We're going to put insert the wire through the two holes. So we insert that wire. You can see the little cutout there. We grab our vise. Now remember, they're a one-way jaw. Once they're on, they're on. With our vise, we're going to slide that over. You can see the hole. We're going to insert that in the hole. All right, we'll demonstrate we can't remove that now, so it's on. Notice the low-profile vices. Not going to damage any horses. Insert the other one into the hole. And there we have our attachment to the post. Now with our rail attached to our end post and laid along our fence line, it's time to insert the rail into our interim brackets. Carefully picking up the rail, ensuring you've got no twists, insert from above into your interim bracket, grab your driver and tech screw, Now we can move on to our next interim post. Okay, now we're going to prepare the rail for the straining end. So we're going to grab a mate, 
We're going to pull this rail fairly firm and we're going to mark the approximate inside of the post. Okay? We're going to place this back on the ground and we're going to square that off. Now remember our post is 200 mil and we want 150 mil extra. So that's 350 mil. At approximate. Again, let's square it off. We're going to grab our bolt cutters. Cut that wire. Grab our snips. Okay. Now remember the process we did before. We're going to cut along here with our snips. Okay, with our flap removed, we grab our wire cutters again, like we did in one of the previous steps. See the gal wire exposed again with our pliers. Again, we're going to remove the plastic sheathing. We've got our holes drilled, ready for the next step. Okay, we're now ready to strain our rail. As you can see, we've inserted the wire into the holes that we drilled earlier. We're going to pull that a little bit tight. We're going to grab our wire vise, remembering again, they're one-way vices. We're going to slide that over into the hole, and our other one, okay, as you can see we've got 150mm of wire sticking out, and then pull that back a little bit, we're going to grab our wire strainer, so we want to pull that back for the wire to go into, we're going to locate that over the head of the wire vise, and that wire in the grip. We're going to strain that up nice, not too much to start with. You may see here we've pulled it up, okay? Now we're going to grab our Stanley knife, just bend that wire out of the way for a minute. We're going to do a little cut along there, approximately 25 millimeters. Alright, we're going to get that and as we strain up that flap's going to pull back and that plastic coat of wire is going to go insert into that hole. This is going to give you a nice finish on your fence. So we're going to grab and now do the bottom. You don't want to over strain it first up. something nice and even. As you can see as I pull it up that flap will push to the side. I might insert a bit more strain on that. Back to our bottom one. We're going to go to the other end of the fence and put a little bit more strain on the other end of the fence where we originally did what we called the dead end post. And that's how you strain bounce back horse fencing. Thanks for watching. Okay, we've strained what we call the dead end. We've pulled it up nice and tight in these areas here. It's looking terrific, all three rails. It's a really nice straight job. Come down here, we've got our interim brackets, very low profile. Looking really nice, nothing's going to hurt itself on there. Again, our second low profile bracket there. Nice and taut. The owner's done a terrific job with his bracing. Poles look fantastic. We've got our vice grips here. 
the wire's nice and taut. The owner's going to put some little staples in there to prevent that wire from coming out. So we don't want anyone like animals or children hurting themselves on that. We've done a great job. It's been, uh, it's been a great day. Well, thanks for watching us, but please visit us at www.fencingforhorses.com.au. Goodbye.